Windows manages to keep me for two reasons, creative apps and VR. But today we make that one. But the, the road to get there was interesting. <laughs> but first, a quick recap for people who are unfamiliar. ALVR streams PC VR games to your quest, like Oculus Air Link, but according to most people, and myself, it does it way better while being open source and using less resources. And just so you know, if I ever say, I got this working, that's- I'm not a developer, I didn't actually- I'm just speaking in the sense that it is running on my machine. I don't know C++ or Rust particularly well yet, and I've done no development work. If you want to thank someone for how cool ALVR is, you should go to their Discord server, not me. But now we've gone through that, this was the most complicated app install process I've ever been through, so I'd like to take you on a journey. For most apps, you'll download a binary, a file that will run. That's the same on Linux, Mac OS, and Windows, and it's what I did for ALVR. For both my Linux and Windows testing that'll come later in the video, I just went to the nightly section, releases, and downloaded the one for the 3rd of June. But that's where things start to diverge. On Windows, I run the installer, I open ALVR, and it works. On Linux, I go to the folder, I double-click the executable file, and SteamVR gives me error 307. And that's fine. In this scenario, I didn't think I had to be smart at all. Someone's already figured this out, it's a problem to do with a package called Mesa, and it can be fixed, and they've got a fix for Arch, which I don't use anymore. And that's what I was talking about before. I'm not just downloading a file that will run for Mesa anymore, I'm downloading the source, the actual code for it, modifying it, and then building it, compiling it back into a binary, an, an executable, that will run, but differently better for me because it'll actually work. So now I've got to figure out how to do it not to an Arch package, but to an RPM, which is what my distro uses. It was very fun, and it worked after many attempts and over an hour. I was actually really shocked that anything would work because I'd lost all hope at this point. But before I bore you any further, let's test things. How does it work? There's a spider behind the camera. I'm gonna get a Hoover. But before we try anything in Linux, let's just get a baseline for what Windows is like. And while we're on Windows, we'll actually be doing higher settings than on Linux because foveated encoding isn't an option there. So right now the settings are 4032 by 2112, both for video encoding and the actual game rendering, and I'm at 130 megabits per second. Let's just do a built-in song. This isn't about measuring scores though. Um, though I do have a video about that up there if you are interested, based on like different refresh rates. I just want to compare what it actually feels like on Linux versus Windows, and you should be able to see my uh, like current latency stats on the left of the screen. One thing to note though, I'm on a nightly version of ALVR that actually has some like changes to how the latency is calculated than the normal one, so my latency right now might appear really high, it doesn't feel any higher than normal to me, it's just that, like, it's being calculated differently than you might be used to. So that felt pretty much normal, though I did notice a bit more stuttering than usual, and I think that's because I'm recording with OBS using my CPU, because my GPU's encoder is being used for this. Um, and I thought that might help, but it actually might be hindering things. Pay no mind to the server FPS bit that I've just highlighted there. That is just one key right now, right now. Um, however, things were definitely not perfect. Uh, but I, these are the settings that I normally use. That's just a recording with OBS thing. So I'm sorry that the stats might be a bit skewed to not being great. Um, but generally, the, the total latency you'll be seeing will be about right, even if the frame times and SteamVR's FPS graph isn't representative of, of normal things. The general, F, uh, the general latency is going to be representative of normal. So before we switch to Linux, I'm actually going to move to the settings that I'm going to be using on Linux on Windows. That'll be changing video to just 100% both for the game and GPU, uh, and, and uh, yeah, GPU like video encoding, and setting the refresh rate to 90. I will also be disabling this. This should just be disabled anyway. It should always be on that. Um, I'll see you in a second. Okay, so now we're at 100% res 
90 hertz. Let me check that things look proper. And um, those really high latency numbers that you're seeing seem honestly about representative. At 90 hertz, things feel not just less smooth, but they just have a lot more latency. And if you kind of look up and, and look down with your eyes through the nose bit of the headset and you move your controller, you can kind of see the controller being out of sync with the actual saber. And that's not something I really get at 120. The latency is actually noticeably worse. And it, it's been a long time since I tried 90 Hertz on Windows. This might actually give Linux some hope because I didn't remember that there was this much latency. Um, let's go back to the same song. I'm not sure if I could even do this. Like, I, I can see the discrete steps that um, something close to my face is taking, and things overall feel less smooth. But the game is definitely still playable. Like, oh, except for when it freezes. That's not my fault. I hope the recording showed that. Wow, that was... I've kind of been spoiled by 120 hertz. I forgot what 90 looked like. Like, I've gotten used to high refresh rate on everything now. My phone is 120 hertz. The Quest is 120 hertz. My monitor is 144. <laughs> my watch is 45 hertz, actually. Um, But general, I forgot... 90 hertz looked like that um but it was mostly okay to play it didn't feel horrible to play it was noticeably worse than 120 hertz but other than the fact that i'm just actually worse at the game because i'm playing at a high speed if 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 i was playing on a slow enough level where like 120 hertz doesn't actually increase my skill 90 hertz would feel perfectly playable. Um, but now let's try Linux. I feel so dense right now. I've been recording at 1080p. And also my audio is just going to be from my phone because passing audio through the Quest is not something I know how to do yet on the Linux. Well, I think I could do um, it's just that I haven't... That feels... That feels a bit better than Windows did. Um, let's try this again. I'm really impressed. <laughs> With the context that I've got now, I'm really impressed. Um, the tracking feels no worse than on Windows. The, um, the, the, the latency... It... It's just... It's just better. This feels like what it felt like when I was trying 120 hertz on Linux though. So I I'm gonna have to check once this song is done if I'm actually trying to do 120 hertz. It doesn't feel as smooth, but the latency feels good. This isn't how I would choose to play Beat Saber as the experience is right now, but I could play Beat Saber like this just fine. Yeah, okay, we're definitely at 90. I think I just lost context for how bad 90 hertz felt once you get used to 120. This feels fine. <laughs> um, let me try the same song again. Oh, but sometimes that happens. I don't think you will have seen that because that's an encoding thing. On Linux, though, something I've noticed is big scene changes. Um, like, I don't know if it's just a different encoder being used, like the software side of it, even though it's hardware accelerated encoding. Um, I don't know if it's the different encoder being used. Big scene changes make everything go slow motion and speed back up again. Um, and that's not something you have on... Windows, which is especially awkward for just loading a Beat Saber song. I might switch to this. This feels fine. And another thing to note, 
Beat Saber doesn't have a Linux port. This is running in Proton. Beat Saber is an extremely well-rated game on ProtonDB. Everything basically just works. I've never tried online, but I highly doubt Beat Saber has anti-cheat, and even if it does, I doubt it's the type of anti-cheat that would care about us being on Linux. That just... I'm, like, I'm, I'm not sure if it's just me getting used to 90 Hz again. It's like if I, if I do the controller shaking test. That feels better than Windows, I'm not sure why. Both of these are running on bare metal. Um, that Windows that I just showed you wasn't a virtual machine. Um, that's really cool. I might be able to. I did install Onward on here, but that is actually not compatible. I've never played the Steam VR tutorial on Linux. I just want to try that. I'm going to try another game. So it works really well, actually, just as well as it did for me when I started using ALVR on Windows at the end of 2020. 90 hertz is fine, and it's my hope, though this isn't based on anything the developers say, so don't get too excited. I hope that for me, it will reach feature parity by the end of the year. Like, I I'm fine messing with audio stuff, I just need 120Hz to be fixed, and it'll basically work the same for me no matter which OS I'm on. There are still some problems, SteamVR doesn't seem to properly end most of the time, so if I close ALVR, I can't launch it again until I restart the computer, but I'm pretty sure that's a SteamVR problem, not an ALVR one. And regardless, you should be excited, because this is just one step closer to an open desktop. SteamVR isn't open, Steam isn't open, Windows isn't open, the games aren't open. And for what Windows is, like, I don't just hate Windows because it's proprietary. Windows is an impressively functional piece of software that a lot of the world relies on. It's just that the day we don't need Windows for those things is only getting closer. Anyway, hopefully you enjoyed 